<clears throat> Greetings, brethren, Hausburger Donkey here, and I have completed my 45 Grot infantry for my Gloomspite Gits army. They're all a bit uh, tangled. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> um, it's 45 because I wanted to fill some gaps, um, like this one right here. Uh, this one, uh, they are not for the actual uh, shooters that I did. Um, they're just alternate standards for the other two units of uh, Grot Infantry that I have. Which are, these are uh, the, the purple cap ones are with spears. And the red cap ones are with uh, swords. And these are just sort of the, the banners that I didn't have. I, did, I had a... Um, one of these icons uh, for the spear guys, and I had a flag for the red dudes, and I wanted to have the the other one. So just so that if I want to use the other one, I ha I have it. Um, and same goes for the for the archers. So these two are for the other units, uh, and for the archers, I have two uh, icons because they is, they are what I think is usually the most sensible thing to have for the archer goblins because uh, that gives you it, it makes them harder to hit and since I'm not really planning on putting them in melee um, you know them taking ranged attacks is is the most common thing that'll happen uh, and this helps against that the flag gives them a better bravery which I think is better for the melee guys but um, if I'm ever going to play this as one unit of 40, then having uh, a flag and an icon makes sense because then I get both of those benefits. Uh, but otherwise, if I play them as units of 20, then I have one icon bearer each. Um, and there's also two with a net and um, they don't have to be in the unit. So I have 40 without these. So I can, I can decide whether or not I want them in the unit. Uh, so if I'm playing them as units of 20, uh, or I'm just having like one unit of 20, I might not use a Netta because, well, 20 goblins don't really, you know, they're basically just for grabbing objectives uh, and for <sighs> delivering fanatics at most and doing some shooting and I'm not really too worried about them being able to debuff anybody. Uh, in melee, because they won't last anyway. But uh, if I have them as a unit of 40, it might be sensible to have two netas in there, just just so they have that debuff. Um, so yeah, and then there's some, some gong bashers in the back. Um, and then we have two champions here and here. And the other ones are a mix of uh, some of these here with the, uh, like, pulling arrows from their quiver, and there's a bunch of uh, ones that just fired. They're from the uh, old uh, Battle for Skull Pass box, so the, the One Piece plastic casts. And then there's a bunch here that I made from the multi-part kit, uh, just for variety's sake, really. And uh, because I didn't have a, I didn't have full units of the, um, I think I had something like 17 of the ones with spear from uh, Skull Pass. And so I just added a few of the multi-parts to that unit, and then I had a bunch of them left. So I made, I made a few more of these archers. And then there's, uh, of course, also the three archers uh, from the Underworld team, which are gorgeous figures. And I just wanted to use them, because I, I already had used other, the other figures from the set. And also this, uh, this Netta is from the Underworld team. Yeah, and I decided to go with... Um, with these light blue hats, I did um, one of these uh, on, I think actually it was the Zarbug, which I used just as a regular shaman, so the, the one from the Underworld team. I gave him a, a, a bright blue hat, and I liked the look of that, so I thought I'd do that on a whole unit. And I actually really like how it turned out. Um, it just makes my army a bit more colorful still, and that's good. And I did yellow arrow feathers because I just wanted to have the sort of yellow that I do have kind of as a, as a running theme on these uh, infantry goblins running through the army. Also, you might notice they don't look quite as good as the other ones, if I have even shown the other ones, I'm not sure. 
Uh, and the reason for that is is I just dry brushed the skin. I, I painted it uh, in my standard um, Death Guard green, then washed it with uh, Ethonian camo shade, and then I dry brushed it with Ogryn camo. Usually I, I give it a highlight of Ogryn camo uh, to make it sort of a really pale skin, but I, I just couldn't be bothered on these. I, I really did not want to paint these, I was so done. Uh, it's actually kind of a little bit better now that I'm on the slightly more fun stuff, which is the uh, the Squig Hoppers, the... Uh, let me see, here it is, the, the Loon Boss on Giant Cave Squig that I'm painting. He's actually kind of a cool model, and I'm, I'm actually not too unhappy about painting him. So I think these, these last ones will actually be done a lot quicker, uh, which is good. But yeah, I was really sick of painting these basically when I started them. <laughs> so I, I did not enjoy painting these at all. And so I put in as little effort as possible. The skin is dry brushed and I I did not do any highlights on the swords or on the um, the like string and all these other sort of things that usually usually I do put highlight, I, I did put highlights on with all the other figures, but with these I just, the only thing I highlighted was the hoods. So the hoods have a base, a wash, a highlight, and then the, the dots. Uh, but everything else is really just base and wash. I could not be bothered to do highlights on any of them. I still think they look fine, and they look okay on the table next to my other figures, but if you do look at them closely, they're, they're just not as nice as the other goblins that I painted. But, eh, whatever. Again, they're, they're mostly just for sitting on the objectives. The worst thing is that I'm out of tufts at the moment. I, I, need, to, I need to make new tufts. So none of them have gotten their... Uh, I, I, I did sort of a teal cave grass kind of thing with these, and I don't have any more tufts that I, that I can then paint. So kind of, uh, kind of a shame. I'm definitely going to have to... Well, definitely. I'm probably going to have to go back at some point and add that. Uh, if I actually will, I don't know, because right now I'm really just so sick of them. <laughs> so... It might very well be that once I'm done painting the last ones, uh, they'll just go in a box uh, for a while, and I, I I won't worry about them at all. Uh, yeah, because I'm I'm just I'm just really over them. So yeah, as I showed you, the uh, the boss is next, and also uh, five more squig hoppers, which will get purple squigs. Uh, they'll get the same. I don't even know if I've shown the other squig hoppers that I have, but the other ones have orange hoods. And these ones will also get orange hoods because the you know I, I kind of use the hoods to sort of signify what troops they are. It kind of because the army is so colorful, it kind of helps me figure out what I have on the table uh, if they have the, these sort of signifiers. So I have the the, the regular squig hoppers have orange hoods, and the Boingrod bounders have uh, sort of green tealish uh, emerald hoods. And uh, because I have two units of squig hoppers, one has uh, orange uh, has. Um, uh, green squigs and the other one had purple squigs. So I have five of those. Uh, I do paint them in uh, sub-assembly where I have the heads of the squigs off uh, and I mounted them on just wire and put them in a, in a cork because then I can paint the inside of the mouth. As you can see, the, some of the squig mouths are really wide open um, but not wide enough that it's fun to get in there with a, with a brush. Right, and paint like the inside of the mouth. So I just leave them off and that way I can uh, Let me get another squick hopper and then that way I can just paint the inside of the mouth as you can see here uh, Because this one for example has like a bug crawling out uh, So I can paint that and then put the head on and that works just fine So yeah, I don't think this will take too long. I'm already pretty far on the squig uh, That one just need the, the squigs just need highlights and then I need to paint the the mouth insides and then it's already onto the goblins, and on these squig hoppers, the goblins are super, super easy because they're really just skin, hood, um, robe, a bit of armor and a weapon, and a little bit of wood on one or the other. But mostly, it's it's really easy to paint them. So, yeah, uh, hopefully, I'll be done by the end of the week. Again, I, I do have a little bit more enthusiasm for these squig hoppers. Which I've also realized is dangerous, because now that I've painted all the garbage stuff that I didn't want to paint, uh, there's, you know, thoughts about getting more stuff for the army, so hopefully I can, I can stay strong and not do that. Uh, and then there's two more things I need to paint. Let me actually just get these out of the way. 
Uh, and that is these <clears throat> two last endless spells that I still had. The uh, the kettle thing uh, um, has spider legs. And um, I did a sort of basic uh, color transition airbrush effect. I uh, don't know how well the colors come across. This is, um, <clears throat> this is Vallejo Emerald. And this is um, a purple that I that I sort of mixed together from uh, these two mecha colors, dark blue and magenta. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to go for like a basic sort of transition, and it's it's gonna get a little bit of a dry brush, and then I think I'm already done with this one because uh, I I just don't I, I put a little bit of verdigris on the on the kettle. But nothing too fancy, and I, I think I'll leave it at that because um, I don't know, it's good enough. <laughs> and then we have the big um, atomic mushroom, and uh, I, I painted it red, the the smoke, and then sort of um, zenithal uh, uh, airbrushed on orange, and then uh, the top I went over with yellow again, so to have like a. Yeah, I, I like it. I like this effect a lot. Um, this one is good enough, I guess, but I really like this one. This one really speaks to me. The head itself will probably be green or some, something like that. And uh, again, I'm probably not going to do too much with these. Um, I'll highlight the bottom probably, maybe even just dry brush it. I don't know. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on these two endless spells, uh, I think. Giving them the airbrush effect is already uh, going to be good enough to, to make them stand out. And then, yeah, those other six figures. And then I'm actually finally done with the Gloom Spite Gits. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. Uh, next, um, I put them away, but next will be Oathmark Goblins, which I'm actually looking forward to quite a bit. Um... I'm not going to do all the Oathmark Goblins at once. I'm going to do uh, some of them. And then I'm going to do the Romans. So that will be that will be a thing. I don't know how long it'll take me, but I will paint all of the Romans at the same time. Um, which means I'm also not very much looking forward to doing all of these shield transfers, because that's actually kind of a pain in the butt. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. And... Um, yeah, I don't know. In general, um, it's it's going okay. I was I was kind of worried I'd be stuck on these for a while longer. Um, so, I mean, I've, I finished these yesterday, Monday evening. I'm not quite sure when I finished them, but it wasn't today. I already I already um, varnished these today, so I, it was at least yesterday that I finished them and. Um, because when I finished them, I was kind of excited. I immediately jumped on the other stuff that I still have to do for the army. So that was good to get like a little bit of a, a second wind to, to finish off this part of the project. All right, that's all there is for uh, the backlog buster. It's still the thing I'm on. And it'll be for a while. So uh, be sure to check in on the next video, which will hopefully be by the end of the week. Maybe. All right, take care.